Hey everybody, welcome back to the Revelation Bible Study. My name is David Kenny, and I am the pastor of Walden Community Church here in Montgomery, Texas. This year we decided to go through the entire book of Revelation in small little bite-sized chunks, maybe eight minutes here, 10 minutes here, 15 minutes here, just so that we could go through the book slowly and uh, just get more out of it and hopefully understand it. We're still right at the beginning. You're welcome to read along with us. We're going to be in Revelation chapter 1, and we're going to start at verse 13. But my first question is to you, who's your favorite actor to play Jesus? Well, there's been a lot of them, right? I mean, there's been Christian Bale, Jim Caviezel, uh, Ralph Fiennes, Ewan McGregor, even Victor Garber played Jesus. Remember? Victor Garber was Jesus in Godspell. Which kind of begs the question, what does Jesus look like? What does Jesus look like and how does he act? What were his mannerisms like? What would it have been like to be in his presence? What would it have been like to hear his voice, to listen to him teach? How does God smile? How does God laugh? Or you could ask, well, what would it be like to be near God? I mean, let's just say you are privileged enough to be in God's presence, to be in the same room as God. How would you then afterwards describe it? How would you tell people what you saw? What words do you think you could use that would help people understand? I'd, would that even be possible? I mean, it would be like a germ trying to describe the universe. Or it would be like the statue of David trying to describe its creator, Michelangelo. We're going to be looking at Revelation 1, verse 13, and we're going to see and listen to how John describes being in God's presence. He says, And in the midst of the lamp stands one, like a son of man, clothed with a long robe and with a golden sash around his chest. So remember last time we said that John had a vision of seven lampstands, which we said were the seven churches that he were writing to. And then through the lampstands, he sees a figure, a figure that's standing in between the lampstands. And he says it's one like the Son of Man, which is a title that Daniel gave to the Messiah. And it was a title that Jesus used to give about himself. I mean, think about it. Jesus has been in heaven all this time. He is the resurrected Messiah. He's in his heavenly form. And now John gets to see Jesus. He gets to see him in all his glory. The same Jesus that we will get to see when we go to heaven. So there's the question that we started with. All right, John, what do you see? What does Jesus look like? Verse 14 says, the hairs of his head were white like white wool, like snow. His eyes were like a flame of fire. His feet were like burnished bronze, refined in a furnace, and his voice was like the roar of many waters." All right, so his hair was white. John says it looks like wool. His eyes are bright, yellow, red, like fire, he says. His skin, the color of bronze. And you're thinking, ah, I can't picture that, or that doesn't look like the Jesus I think of when I close my eyes. Maybe that's just what Jesus looked like then. Maybe Jesus looked different before. Maybe is this just his resurrected form? Is this what he looks like only in heaven? Well, you know, Daniel also had a vision of heaven. And there are several things in Revelation that you're going to find mirror things that were in Daniel in the Old Testament. So let's look at Daniel. And let's listen to what Daniel said when he describes God. Daniel 7, 9 says, As I looked, thrones were placed, and the Ancient of Days took his seat. His clothing was white as snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was a fiery flame, and its wheels were burning flame. Daniel uses several of the same words and the same images here in his text, doesn't he? Jesus looks like God. God looks like Jesus. And you can say, ah, all right, okay, what, what does the next verse say? 
right, let's go to the next verse. All right, let's go to the next verse. Verse 16. In his right hand he held seven stars. From his mouth came a sharp two-edged sword, and his face was like the sun, shining in full strength. You're like, uh, that didn't help me. That, <laughs> this is why I don't read Revelation. It's verses just like this. It sounds like I should know what I'm reading. It sounds like maybe ah, I missed something. I'm just confused. I get it. But let's remember, John is trying to describe heaven. He's trying to describe God. And he's using our limited, earthly, human vocabulary. He's doing his best. Verse 20, if you remember, told us that the seven stars were the angels watching over the seven churches. But he also says, from his mouth came a sharp two-edged sword. That could also be hard to picture, right? And you're kind of wanting to know, is that literal? Let's use common sense, okay? Let's be rational. Because there are people that would say, well, a sword is a violent image, and it could mean a weapon, or it could mean judgment. But isn't there another passage in the Bible that talks about a two-edged sword and what would be coming out of the mouth of Jesus? Hebrews 4.12 For the word of God is living, active, and sharper than a two-edged sword. So the word of God is a two-edged sword. John says a sharp two-edged sword comes out of Jesus' mouth. What do you think? Is this a real image or is this figurative language? John also says that to look upon Jesus is to look at the sun shining at full strength. Can you do that? No, you can't do that. Which is a way for John to say his image was so bright I couldn't even look at him. The Bible says that Saul had a similar occurrence, right? In Acts verse 9, it says, As they approached Damascus, a sudden light from heaven shone around him, and falling to the ground, Saul heard a voice. And Saul asks that light, Who are you? And the light says, I am Jesus. Which, I know, we've always wanted to know what Jesus looks like, or what would it be like to see Jesus or to be in his presence. But the Bible says that to be in Jesus' presence would be like being in the presence of the sun. I don't know, how would you describe it? Visually, would you say it was like being near the sun? I remember last week when he was talking about his voice, he said it was like a trumpet. How would you describe God's voice audibly? And tell me something, what would you do if you were in the presence of this sort of being? You'd probably do the same thing John did. Verse 17 tells us, When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. When John saw Jesus, he fell over and worshipped him. He had no choice. His body had no choice. John is painting a picture for you. He says, there is us, right? Make no mistake. There is us, and then there's God. There's our power, and there's God's power. There's God's riches, and there's our riches. There's the things that we can do, and there's the things that God can do. There's our beauty, he says, and then the beauty of God is like staring at the sun. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.